Question 6 from the 2019 Higher Physics SQ Exam Section 2. And stars, were told, emit radiation with a range of wavelengths. The peak wavelength of the radiation depends on the surface temperature of the star. I'm showing that graph here. It says the graph shows how the energy emitted per second per unit area varies with the wavelength lambda of the radiation for a star with a surface temperature of 5000 K. So when that star is at 5000 K, each wavelength, the energy is emitted at that wavelength and it's measured and a graph is plotted and it's a very famous graph which is known as the black body radiation curve and you can see as a peak and it goes back down again. And the peak radiation emitted is always at a certain wavelength. So for example, the peak radiation emitted occurs at this wavelength here. Now, we're told that a second star has a surface temperature of 6,000 K. And on the graph above, it's in bold letters, so it means do it on the graph above, add a line to show how the energy emitted per second per unit area varies with the wavelength lambda of the radiation of the second star. So really what we're doing is drawing the graph, the new black body radiation graph for the star at a higher temperature. Now, in order to do a little bit of revision for this, one, this, this question, I'm going to take you to that wonderful site, the PHET site, to see the simulation in action. So here we are at the PHET physics simulation site, a wonderful site. And I would strongly urge you to go to that site and pick out the black body temperature one and play about with it, experiment about with it and get to know what that curve is doing. So I've set the temperature of this particular star to be 4500K. Now I know in the diagram that's not the temperature but I'm doing this in order so that the scale was accommodating when I change the graph. If I, if I put it to the exam values, the graph goes off the scale and it's very hard to see. So stick with me. It's 4,500 Kelvin and you can see we have a peak uh, energy at here and that corresponds to a peak wavelength here. This is the natural visible spectrum. So this is all the wavelengths that we can see. In fact, if I put in the graph values, uh, you can see that we're going to have a peak energy corresponding to 0.644 of a micrometer according to the scale. Now watch what happens to the wavelength and the peak when I increase the temperature to say 5500K and I go all the way up 5500K and you can see that the peak has increased and the peak which occurs at this wavelength here, the wavelength has got smaller, it's moved more towards the violet side of the spectrum. So two things have happened since I increased that temperature. If I go back down again, I'll show you. You can see at 4,500, the peak rises up and the wavelength where the peak occurs gets smaller. And you can see the overall area of the graph is increasing. That's very important because as the temperature increases, the whole area of the graph increases as well, which means that the actual star is giving out more energy if, uh, if its surface temperature is actually a lot bigger. So that's how we do it on the PHET simulation. Now let's put it all together back to the question. So back to our question and all we have to know is just draw the new graph, the new black body graph of what would happen with the star with increased surface temperature. And we know the graph is going to look like this. So we just sketch that onto our graph as best that we can. And you can see that the amount of energy emitted per second per unit area has increased and the peak occurs at a much smaller wavelength. And that's the two main statements you'd have to make, and that's how the graph would have to be drawn to give you your two marks. Question 6b, we are giving a table of results of some experiments. And the table gives the surface temperature T in Kelvin of four different stars, and the peak wavelength, lambda peak, of the radiation emitted from each star. It's all presented here in a nice table. Now it says use all the data, and that means all the data because all is in bold letters. Use all the data in the table to show that the relationship between the surface temperature T and of the, st of the star and the peak wavelength lambda peak radiated from the star is given by that equation or that relationship there. 
So let's put it into some sort of a form that we can actually work with. So we start off with the following. We start off with the T, that's the surface temperature of the star, is equal to 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by lambda peak. So that's our equation there. Now if we cross multiply, we'll have T times lambda peak, and that's going to give us the value of 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3. So what we should do then is we should take each line of that table in turn and multiply the temperature in Kelvin by the lambda peak lambda in meters, and we should get a figure about 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3. And if every bit of the data equals that, then we can say the relationship holds. So it's a case of being very systematic and doing all the calculations very slowly and getting an answer. And you can see from the answers 2.8952 times 10 minus 3, 2.907 times 10 minus 3, 2.890 times 10 minus 3, 2.904 times 10 minus 3, we can see that if we go to just two significant figures, we'll have definitely a relationship that the temperature times the lambda peak is definitely going to be equal to that value there, 2.9 times 10 to minus 3. So we have proved it. Now you can do a graph of that, but I would strongly urge you not to do that. Just stick with the numerical data, use all the data, round up to get the 2.9 times 10 minus 3, or put down the significant figures, and you've completed the question. T times lambda peak does equal 2.9 times 10 minus 3, and therefore your relationship holds.